A long time ago, I made a video with the five best OBS plugins, and while they are still amazing, many, many new ones have come out since. Simple gradients, spinning sources, and complete control over your OBS layout. I'm going to show you five more plugins that I use almost every single day, so I'm sure you will start using at least three of these in every single one of your streams. There are a lot of new plugins out there, but this one must be one of my favorites. Maybe you want to zoom in a bit, or crop off some of the sides, or like me, you want to have a vertical camera on your stream. Then you can, of course, put your source into a scene you are looking to add it to, and then use the old left-click trick to crop the camera. But let's be honest, that looks super unfinished. It looks like you've just dropped a camera on top of your game. It would look so much better with a little bit of finishing, such as some rounded corners or shape. Well, normally you'd have to go into Photoshop or Affinity Designer, make a mask, which is like a black figure that you then have to cut out to the exact right size and export, add as a mask, stop that. Instead, we are going to use Advanced Masks by Finite Singularity. To install this plugin, go to the OBS website and click the download button in the top right corner. This process is going to be the same for all these plugins, by the way, so just remember this step for the rest of the video. Once it's downloaded, open the file and extract it into your OBS folder. If you've done it right and have restarted your OBS, you'll see a new filter appear, the Advanced Mask Filter. Go ahead and add that to your camera. There are a few different mask types that you can choose from. Shape allows you to, you know, choose a shape and then fit it exactly to what you want it to be. Source allows you to pick another source and will make a mask based on that source's alpha channel. The third type you can choose is image and it's just like the built-in OBS mask, except you can change things after making it using the mask settings. And lastly, there's gradient, which does this fade out thing. Not sure if that's ever gonna be useful, but if you can use it, I would love to see your examples. For now, let's set it back to shape, rectangle, and then size it exactly how you want it to look. I think I want to fill a bit more of the frame with my face, so I'm going to zoom in a little bit and then use the mask geometry settings to offset my center Y a little up. Lastly, I'm gonna scroll down and set the corner radius to 20 pixels for a nice rounded corner look. You might also remember that in my last video, I recommended StreamFX for OBS Studio. But since that video, that plugin has become a paid service, and I don't like that kind of gatekeeping behavior of locking tools behind monthly subscriptions, so I've been trying to replace it. And I've got to be honest, I don't think I have replaced every functionality yet, but what I have done is find a solution for one of the most popular features of StreamFX the point tilt zoom or PTZ effect. Being able to move your sources in 3D space can make your stream look really slick, streamlined, and can shift the focus back onto you and the game. The plugin we are going to use for this is the 3D effect by who else than Exceldro. This plugin looks absolutely amazing and deals with one of my biggest pet peeves. Once you've installed the plugin, head into your filters and add the 3D effect filter. Let's add a few degrees of FOV. This will allow us to play with the effect a little more without breaking it. The only thing you need to understand for this plugin to work is that the X, Y, and Z axes run from left to right, bottom to top, and front to back through the middle of your source. Rotating the X allows you to tilt up and down. Rotating the Y allows you to pan left and right and rotating the Z allows you to spin right round. Similarly, the position X, Y, and Z allow you to move the whole camera left and right, up and down, and forwards and backwards. Lastly, the scale X allows you to stretch your source either width-wise or height-wise. So why is this such a good plugin? Because it helps guide the audience to look where we want them to look. Whenever you are streaming, you will always want to make sure that the audience can follow your eyes. It is something humans normally do, which means if you are playing a game, but your camera is just aiming outwards, that just looks weird. So I always make sure that my camera is aimed inwards. And because my camera is right in front of me, that means I need to tilt it slightly. Since I like my camera on the right side of the screen, I'm going to shift the Y rotation only a few degrees to the left. Such a simple 3D effect looks a lot better than you might expect, and you can use it in so many different ways. Another very simple effect we can make 
is a very nice camera border. You could of course do this with a color source, but that solid color is going to get boring real quick. So instead we are going to add a gradient source. And for this, we are going to need the gradient source plugin by Exceldro. And you know what? We can make that in less than 30 seconds. Very simple. After installing the plugin, head into your camera scene and add a gradient source. Give it the colors you want. I will go with blue and purple and turn the gradient so you like how it looks. Then in the filters, add another advanced mask. But this time, set it to source and set the source to your camera. Grow the size of the scale until it looks good. I think a nice thin border at 102% or something like that will do. And now we're going to offset the mask so it neatly borders the camera. And that's it. You now have a camera border. Couldn't be simpler if you ask me. Okay, I know we still have two more plugins to go, right? But I really want to add a bonus one to this one. Look. We have accidentally built a really awesome camera overlay, but it misses something. When I size it right, the camera still looks like it just plastered onto the gameplay. And while it no longer looks out of place, it also doesn't really pop, does it? I'm gonna make it pop. To make this happen, we are gonna get ourselves another plugin by Finite Singularity called the Stroke Glow Shadow Plugin. And as the name suggests, the Stroke Glow Shadow Plugin adds three new filters to OBS, which allow you to add a stroke, a glow, or a shadow to your sources. Surprise, right? And yes, this is another function of StreamFX, which I've replaced with a better and free plugin. These all function very similar, so I'm just gonna add another filter, this time to the scene source, and it is going to be a shadow filter. In the filter, I'm going to set the size to around 20 pixels, drag the intensity right down, and then set the shadow distance to about 25 pixels. This gives us a nice little drop shadow underneath the camera to make it look complete. It's now popping off the screen, even on a large screen, which really adds to the quality look. The next one is for you. Yeah? You in particular, the one that has the docs everywhere. Preview, scenes, sources, transitions, audio mixer, chat, activity feed, stream details, YouTube stuff, vertical plugin, and more. I'm one of you, by the way. And honestly, this plugin may have saved my sanity. The problem that I saw happening with many streamers is that all these things are cluttering their screen so they don't notice when a redemption happens or somebody chats or a follow comes in. So what if you could clean it up so you only see the things that really matter at the time. You can do that now with this completely new plugin, JR Docky. After you've installed the plugin, you have a new menu in the top bar called Doc Sets. A Doc Set is pretty much just a preset of the docs you want to have available, where they should be placed, and how you want them set up. Once you've built yourself a Doc Set, you can save it by going into the menu, giving it a name, and clicking Save. Here are a few examples of the Doc Sets that I use. This horizontal duck set has everything I need to edit my horizontal scenes, including an extra big preview window so I can click and drag things into the right place without feeling like I don't have enough space. I've made a similar thing for my vertical scenes right here, which only have the vertical scenes and sources and a very big vertical preview window. Sadly, you can't remove the horizontal preview, so I just smushed that into the corner. The third duck set has all the docs. Every single one. Twitch details, YouTube details, Twitch chat, YouTube chat, activity feeds, redemption cues, everything. How I use this one, I will show you in just a second. And lastly, there is my streaming doc set. This one is clean with Twitch and YouTube chat, scenes, sources, and a preview of my horizontal and vertical streams. Nothing else. The nice thing is you can set hotkeys to cycle through these as well in your OBS settings, but this is much more powerful with StreamerBot because you can switch to a specific other doc set. Just open StreamerBot and add a new action. Add an OBS raw sub action and use this code as the raw input. I will leave that in the description as well so you can just copy paste it. Then just change the file name to the name you gave the doc set and now when I press the button, the doc set changes, meaning I can switch from the clean streaming doc set to one with all the clutter, change a title or game, and then switch back easily, which is, by the way, how I use it every single day. This last one, though, has the potential to make your content for YouTube and TikTok 10 times faster. It is probably the thing I hate to do 
most. Watching back my own VOD to grab shorts and games that I might want to cut into regular content. It is like looking for a one minute needle in a four hour long haystack every single time. Honestly, the stream is hours long and you just have to scrub through it to get the good parts. It takes ages and then you still need to edit it. Wouldn't it be nice for you to have a giant magnet that you can hold over the haystack and there are all the needles. Since OBS 30.2, it is possible for you to add chapter markers to your stream recordings, which automatically show up in your editing software like DaVinci Resolve. To do this, head into your settings and change your recording format from MKV to MP4 Hybrid. Oh, and don't worry if you watch my recording settings video, this is the best of both worlds. Easy editing and no lost work if you crash. Now we are going to download the StreamUp Chapter Marker Manager by Andy Lippy. Once you've installed the plugin, a new dock will appear, which yes, you can manage with JR Docky. First, open up the cog and set a default chapter name. For me, I'm going to call it Highlight so that I know which chapter that is. Then tick Use Incremental Chapter Names, Show Previous Chapters and Insert Chapter Markers into Video File. Oh, and if you have a gaming scene, intermission scene, be right back scene, etc., make sure to also toggle the Set Chapter on Scene Change. Now, every time you press the Save Chapter Marker button, it will add a chapter marker called Highlight. But what if you want to call the chapter something specific, like Short or the thing you were talking about? Well, then you just enter the chapter name and click save chapter marker. And when you want to repeat a certain marker, just click it in the previous chapters and it automatically adds it to the chapter name again so you can click save again. Of course, this would not be very useful if you have to alt tab every time you want to make a chapter. So you can also make hotkeys. There is the standard hotkey already available, but if you have a specific hotkey you want to make, then we can open the settings again and click set preset chapter hotkeys. Now we can add a chapter name that will be saved right there. So let's make sure we have one called chapter shorts potential. In the OBS hotkeys menu, we can now filter for chapter and you see three options. The default chapter hotkey will just add a highlight chapter, while the one specifically for shorts potential will add that as a marker in your stream. Now, when you load it up in your editing software, all you need to do is go through the exact markers and you find the clip you wanted to make right there. That means you can start editing quicker and spend the extra time optimizing your content. When you are thinking about making more content, it might help you to have the right OBS plugins to make your stream look amazing, generate a subtitle track and way more. You can find those in this video where I discuss the five best OBS plugins and as always, stream better, stream smart.